Hello, and welcome to Tech Topics. My name is Lisa, and I'm with the Tampa Hillsborough County Public Library. Glad you could join us this evening. All right, I hope everyone is doing all right today. We are gonna get started on today's topic, which is cutting the cord. Um, a lot of us are trying to save money these days, and one of the ways that we can do that is by cutting out the cable bill, um, or at least part of it. Um, and go into different streaming options. So that's what we're gonna go over today. Uh, if you have any questions as we go along, go ahead and type those in the question box that you'll see in your webinar menu on the right-hand side. For some of you, that's gonna look like a question mark if you're on a mobile device. Uh, if you're on, the, on a computer, it might look like a little bubble. So click on that, type your questions in as we go along, and at the end of our session, uh, I will pull those up and uh, hopefully be able to answer them for you. Uh, if I don't have an answer, I will do my best to look them up, or I will get back to you after the program. So type those in as we go along. We would love to hear from you, um, and let's get going. All right, so some of you might be asking, I am ready to jump in with both feet, all about the saving money, but what do I need to get started? So big thing that you're gonna need uh, to get going is a device. You're gonna need some way to connect your screen to the internet so that you can get that signal. So one way you can do that is with a smart TV. Some smart TVs have programs built in, they have apps built in, where instead of connecting to a cable line coming in, they would connect through the Wi-Fi to your internet signal and access content that way. Another way you can do it is if you, if you don't have a smart TV maybe, but you might have a TV that has a plug in the back that could take a, for example, a USB stick. There are USB streaming sticks that you can plug in and get internet content, streaming content that way. Uh, you might have heard of Roku's or maybe the Amazon sticks. That's what we're talking about in this case. Some way to connect a, a box, small box to connect to your TV that will uh, let you access the internet directly. If you already have a, a gaming console at home, maybe you have an Xbox, a PlayStation, something along those lines, uh, if that has an internet connection through your Wi-Fi or your home internet, uh, in most cases, you'll be able to download a number of apps on there that can access the same type of content. So basically anything that's gonna bridge that gap between the, the internet signal coming to your home and the screen that you want to view it on. So whether that's your TV or your computer or your laptop, this is just how we're going to get that signal to the display. Speaking of, you need internet. If you're wanting to stream content, you will need access to the internet. So at home, that might mean your home Wi-Fi that's coming in through the cable uh, that's being provided. It might be through, uh, through a Wi-Fi device, like a Wi-Fi dongle that you can connect to the internet with uh, through a mobile provider, or one of the Wi-Fi hotspots that you can check out from the library. So there are a number of ways to get to that. Um, some of them have, have uh, more cost, some have less cost. Some will get you only a pure Wi-Fi signal, and others will get you more of a, a traditional modem that you can physically connect to the internet with. So you definitely need internet to stream. And in a lot of cases, you're gonna want internet with a solid bandwidth. Bandwidth just means how much signal can we get to you? So if you have relatively high bandwidth, which will be the case with most uh, home internet services, it's not gonna be a problem for most people to stream content. If you're streaming through a mobile device where, where that signal is coming in over the air, Depending on how strong your signal is, you might struggle to get a solid stream going that will provide you an uninterrupted view without buffering or kind of skipping on you. Then you need to figure out which platform you want to use. So many choices here. So streaming platform is basically all this means is this is the service. This is, you know, if you're going traditional TV viewing, you're going to pay your cable company for that content. 
with streaming, you're going to get that content either through a free service. Uh, the library has a number of free options that, uh, that are provided, such as Hoopla or Canopy, any number of uh, services that you can get through the library to stream content, or other services. There are paid services, there are free services. You've got your, your, your big name, Netflix, Hulu's, things like that. But there are also other options, free options. Uh, some are going to be very specific, you know, sports specific content. Some of them are going to be movie specific content. So there are tons and tons of options out there. So I invite you to explore those and explore what the library can give you for free on that. Uh, and lastly, just in terms of what you need, something to consider is the saying goes, there's an app for that. Well, with streaming, there's an app provided by just about every service you can think of. Uh, any of these services that you go with, whether they're paid or free, they're very likely going to be associated with an app or an application, a program that you install either on the mobile device, on the smart TV, or that you would get to which, with whichever way you're connecting to the internet. So check the app store for that device that you're using and see what they have available. A lot of them will have a button that you can click uh, to choose from. So we'll leave that there. I know that's a lot of information to go through, so uh, I'm gonna leave it up here for another minute and give you a chance to take a note. Um, if anything has, if I've gone too fast on any of this, just make a quick note of it or type that into the question box and I will be happy to come back to it once we get to the end of our program. All right, move this over, there we go. All right, our types of streaming platforms. We went into it just a little bit. Um, the big, big difference between uh, the platforms is the free versus the paid options, of course. We went into this a little bit already with the library apps that you can download and with the other content. Just keep in mind that is the big difference is there are some that are free, some that are paid. Some will have subscriptions that are on a month to month basis where you sign up for it and you say, hey, well, I don't normally want to watch a ton of content, but yeah, you know, I'm gonna be on vacation next month. So maybe, maybe I'll have time to you know, binge a, a new show and watch all the episodes in one month. You might consider signing up for a, you know, just for that month and then canceling it. Some will give you a discount if you pay several months ahead or buy you know, a year subscription ahead. So there's always different options with those. Uh, one thing I'll point out is that if you're planning on doing it month to month where you're only going to uh, watch it for a limited time and then cancel it, is definitely make yourself a note on your calendar so that you can follow up on that. You want to make sure that, that you're not paying for an extra month just because you went in to cancel and you're like, oh no, it was a, it was yesterday that I needed to cancel. So make yourself a note of that if you're trying to save by only buying it a month at a time. Make sure you go in there and hit that cancel button. Some of them will even let you cancel it pretty much as soon as you sign up and then still watch the rest of the month. So play around with that, see what options are out there and just keep track of how long your subscription is for or how long the free trial, which is always a favorite, how long that free trial is for before you have to start paying for it. Other pros and cons to consider is the content. A lot of these apps are going to be very specific in terms of what you can view. Some of them are sports specific apps or services, uh, whether it be a, a NFL or NHL, uh, where you sign up for one specific sports packages where you can sign up for it and watch all of the content. Uh, something to keep in mind so that, that that's a pro. If, if all you really are interested in is watching a specific sport, you might save a ton of money just by purchasing that app and not worrying about a service that provides you tons of channels that you're never going to watch. The downside to that is, uh, in a lot of cases for sports or very local specific content, 
they will have um, a blackout in the local area where you can only watch it outside of the, the area where that team is from because the local channel, the ABC, NBC, CBS, or what have you, will have the rights to broadcast it for the home team. So even if you sign up for those, you might get every uh, game that that uh, league is playing, maybe except for the home games. So something to consider uh, if that's important to you. Um, and again, all of these are gonna have very, very specific content. There's not gonna be a significant overlap between them because a lot of them are producing their own shows, especially some of the uh, paid apps. Uh, so your Netflix, your Amazon Prime, your, your uh, HBO subscription, they're producing their own shows. So even if that show is maybe you know, three or four years old, you're not going to catch it on another platform because that streaming platform owns that show. So something to consider there is that if you have a number of different shows that you are interested in watching, you might have to pay for a number of different subscriptions to get those. So keep track of that. See, you know, really weigh the pros and cons of if that's worth it or if maybe uh, a traditional TV package might be might make more sense for you, just something to consider on there. So content is the big, big difference between them um, and the biggest pros and cons between those. All right, Let me pop on over to our next one. And again, I've said it before, I'll say it again, always check your library options first. Uh, my favorite price is free. If it's free, it's for me and the library has lots of those. So hcplc.org slash movies will uh, get you a quick link to most of our uh, streaming content. And I really hate for folks to skip this options. Um, if you grew up like I did with the rapid ears antenna uh, on top of the TV where you had to kind of hold it just at the right angle to get your signal in, that's changed. That's no longer as finicky and maybe not aesthetically pleasing as it used to be. Uh, modern broadcast antennas are, uh, they're really slim and streamlined. And in a lot of cases, you can uh, maybe mount it in an attic and just run the cable down from there in uh, following basically the pre-installed cable lines that might be in your house already. Uh, or you can uh, place it near a window and run that cable to your HD display somewhere else in the room, you can hide them, you can tuck them away, and the because the new broadcast standards are a lot higher, you're going to get, in a lot of cases, a clear HD beautiful picture. Uh, this is something that I do in my house. I have various streaming apps. I also have cable TV, but there's one room in my house where there's no cable line that, that goes to it directly, and it's kind of an inconvenient place to run one. Well, rather than installing a, uh, a streaming device on that TV, I just popped up a really cheap, it was maybe $10 antenna that I got, um, that I bought off the internet. They're easy to be had. I've seen them in local thrift stores. Plug that in and I get all of the local channels and a bunch of other local free to air channels. Clear, clear picture. So. Streaming over the internet is a great high-tech way to solve the problem of cutting the cable and maybe reducing that bill some. But uh, don't, don't underestimate the power of the antenna. It's low-tech, but it works and it's free. So definitely something to consider, especially if maybe you don't have a dedicated internet line at home. If you don't have internet service at home and you're relying on a mobile phone, this might be a really great way to save that data on your phone and get a ton of uh, content over the air to your TV. So don't pass that up, check that out. And let's pop over to our next slide. Ah, so I said it before, I'll say it again and again. <laughs> if you want free content, the library is your friend. We have so many, but today we're gonna to talk a little bit about Canopy. Canopy is another one of the great free apps that we have, and 
I love it because I can find a ton of classic films and foreign films that a lot of the big streaming services just don't have. Uh, so I love it for that. I love to be able to see some of those fun fun movies. And there's there's tons of content for, for all ages on there, but especially some of the uh, foreign films and art house films are on there. So check that out, Canopy app. Visit hcplc.org slash movies. And yeah, I'd love to see if you if you've watched something on there, type that in the comments and we can we can see what your current favorite is. All right, folks, we are at the Q&A session. Pull up that menu item here. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and start typing in those questions. While you're doing that, I'll tell you real quick while I'm pulling up the, oh, couple questions in here already, great. Uh, so while any other attendees are typing in their questions, um, just kind of keep in mind that we will, uh, we are happy to answer the questions live now. But if you need to reach the library, if you have a question about this program or other services, you can get to us hcplc.org slash contact. That'll have all of our various phone numbers, websites, uh, including the really great Ask a Librarian option. Ask a Librarian is a way that you can chat over a web chat or text message or phone call. It connects you to one of our local uh, Hillsborough County librarians, and we, we're happy to answer reference questions or questions about your library account, any number of things. So check that out while you're on the website. And if you're interested in learning about more programs that we have technology-wise, um, or anything else, hcplc.org slash events. Also keep an eye out for all of our summer programs coming up. There's so much on the horizon, you guys, everything for all ages, uh, June and July is gonna be the big two months for that. Definitely check out what we have coming out on there. Uh, and last but not least, hcplc.org slash tech topics if you wanna see the other programs in this series. Go. Oh, okay, so let me get through our questions here. Uh, we had a question on how to use the library hotspot. So that is a great question. The library has hotspots, uh, mobile devices that you can check out. And what it is, is it's, a, it's basically a cell phone without a screen. Uh, it provides a wireless signal that is basically a cell phone signal that connects, that, that puts out that signal in your home that you can connect to. So you can use your cell phone if you have one as a hotspot and broadcast the cell phone signal out and connect your computer that way. But you can also do it with a Wi-Fi hotspot. You'll use that signal, connect your uh, computer to it or connect your smart device to it. And it'll be just like being connected to a home internet the bandwidth will be a little bit uh, lower because it's working on cell phone standard bandwidth rather than home internet standard bandwidth. But in most cases, this is gonna be enough to get you to do some basic streaming, uh, definitely browsing the web, that sort of thing. So those are available on the library website. Let's see if I can pull up a quick link for, for you guys in the chat here. If I can copy and paste it while we're live on the air, I would love it. I might not be able to get to it that quickly though. Yeah, unfortunately I'm not getting to that uh, Wi-Fi hotspot page uh, on our homepage quick enough, but I will happily follow up with you and send that to you after the program. I can send you a link to where, where you can get those. All right. That does us for today. I was happy to see all of you. I see some familiar faces in our attendee list here. So it was good to see familiar faces on the screen and I look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, our next topic coming up, I believe is going to be on digital recording. So keep an eye out for that and we will see you back with the next tech topic. My name is Lisa and we will see you soon.